My name is Nils, and I'm an educational advisor here at Earmaster. I've been teaching at the Royal Academy of Music here in Aarhus in Denmark for over a decade, teaching music theory. I've been working several years as well as a choir conductor. My colleague uh, Quentin is my co-host, as I said, and um, he'll be answering your questions in the in the chat or passing them on to me. So don't hesitate to write or questions or comments there. But first, let's take a look at the content of this webinar. If you hang in just a second, I'll share my screen. There, hopefully you should be able to see that now or in a few seconds. The efficient oral training with Earmaster. We're gonna be talking about the Earmaster app and talking about what is efficient oral training and how's that done with Earmaster. And lastly, we have our Q&A session. If you wanna become good at something, you know that you have to practice. You practice with your instrument or you train your voice if you're a singer. But for the more general skills, such as oral skills and theoretical knowledge, it's hard to train those if you don't have a teacher by your side every day. So you need a tool for that. And this is what Earmaster is, a tool for training and a tool for teaching. I compare it with physical training. When people want to build their muscles, they often go to the gym because there they find the tools they need. For ear training, ear master is that tool. You don't need to go to the gym or anywhere, actually, because it's right on your phone, tablet, or computer. Ear master is used by leading educational institutions worldwide. Here you can see logos of a few of them. It's available in 15 languages, and in a few months, Japanese will be added, making it 16 languages. Earmaster is an app available for all devices, and the app is used by over 100,000 people in more than 160 countries. Many use the app just for themselves, but to meet, the, to meet the demand from schools and choirs for an oral teaching tool, we've added a cloud-based solution that we call Earmaster Cloud. Earmaster Cloud is our learning management system. With that, teachers, or choir directors can monitor the other users' results and give them assignments in the app. It allows schools and choirs to manage users and create classes and student profiles. Earmaster Cloud is also where all assignments and results are stored. If we see it from the teacher's perspective, the teacher uses the Earmaster app to create assignments, assign them to her students, and finally also for assessment and for tracking their progress. The students can work with Earmaster, whether with the building courses or with the assignments from the teacher. And this can be done on any device because the data is synced with the cloud and is available anytime on any device that the student chooses to log into. Earmaster can even work in an offline mode, so you're not required to have access to the internet all the time. And about the company, we're a company that's based in Denmark in the city of Aarhus, which is the second biggest city, right there, as you can see. And what is then efficient oral training? Efficiency means reaching the desired result with the least amount of resources or the least amount of time. And since being a musician requires tons of hours of practicing, doing it efficiently really makes a big difference. And here, just a few suggestions recommendations for that, how to practice efficiently. Using medium to short sessions with high frequency, research shows that this is much more efficient and pays better off. Earmaster Clouds lets you see not just how much, but also when your students have practiced, been practicing with the app. Doing training that helps you or your students take the next step, not the last step again, or the step several feet ahead, but focusing on where the student is and taking, helping him and her take the next step. Changing the tempo is another important aspect. Going slow for learning new skills and going faster for improving skills already acquired. And tempo here is not just a matter of the tempo in the music, but also of the progression of the exercises. 
And then lastly, doing each exercise with a purpose. And we shall see how all these aspects can be addressed with your master by choosing the right exercise for the right purpose and adjusting the settings to fit that purpose. Here you can see a view over the different modules that we have. It's divided into five categories called intervals, chords, scales, rhythm, and melodies. There are 14 different workshops under these categories. And today, we will look at exercises under each category. And for training efficiently with EarMaster, we'll be looking at some specific examples. And I'm going to change my screen sharing right now. So if you hang in a moment, we will move to the EarMaster app. So, now you should be able to see the EarMaster home screen. This is where you, you start when you open the app. And it has several workshops and, and courses. And for this session today, I've prepared a special workshop. And I've given it to what I call Ear Training Class 1. So I click on this. This could be my your training class at the Music Academy or elsewhere. And I have put the exercises into those different five categories that I talked about. The first one is intervals, focusing on hearing intervals first. And the focus is purely on the ear here. Of course, knowledge of the intervals is a prerequisite. We use the intervals from minor second to a perfect fifth and the student can hear those before starting if uh, necessary. The sound that you hear is going through my microphone from the computer. So the real sound you get when using EarMaster yourself will be much better. It started. So it's set up to be a multiple choice uh, answer or input. So I can take a new question and try to answer. I got that one right. Up here, you can follow how many questions there are. Here it's four because there are these four gray lines that get a color as we progress. New question, we can have it repeated. It was a major second. We take them in as fifth, correct as well. And we can try to, that was wrong. What was wrong then? Let me hear the question again. I play the question, I'll play my answer. Uh, of course, I answered fourth, but it was a fifth. I finished the exercise and I'm recommended to retake the lesson because ideally I should read 90% or more, but I will go on to the next lesson which is also a lesson with intervals. But here, the focus is on reproducing the intervals, that is singing the intervals. We will try to do it in two different ways. First, a slow mode. I talked about tempo earlier, a slow mode for practicing, later a fast mode for um, improving or boosting the skills. So here, I have all the time that I want. Um, I can hear the question. And the question is just a note, and I'm supposed to sing the perfect fourth above. I can hear it again. No. If I think it's right, I answer yes, and it was correct. No. No. I go with that. I made your second. No. Answer. No. 
and I got the major third wrong because what I got was my minor second. Let me just hear my answer. And that was the question. Ah, uh, of course. No, no. That was the correct one. I know that for next time then. I finished the exercise. <laughs> I am advised to repeat it, but I will move on for now. Next lesson is again interval singing, but now in the faster mode. I don't allow myself or allow the student, if I'm a student, so much time now. Let's look at the settings that I've changed. We jump into the exercise and I click up here in the upper right corner and I can see the settings that are behind this, this, um, this dialogue or this workshop. So I look at the question flow and I can see that there, it's set to automatically give me a new question, always, no matter what, after only two seconds. I get the question repeated after five seconds, if I haven't already answered, but I have a maximum limit of two repetitions of the question. I have an answering time limit of 10 seconds, which of course uh, stresses me a little bit. And um, I have automatically submit answer when Earmaster gets the correct number of tones. In this case, it's just getting one tone because that's the tone, the given interval above the question tone. Let's try it. So I start the exercise and it just keeps going until um, the five questions that we can see we have are through one, two, three, four, five questions up here. Let's try it. No. Wrong. No, no. Right. No. I get it again. <clears throat> no. No. Ah, it was a major third. No. That was it, already done, 60%, could have been better. Um, so I could go back and retake it. <clears throat> so we tested hearing and singing intervals and with a multiple choice, we got a pure focus on the sound and the ear. And uh, with the practicing mode without limitations, we got plenty of time to practice. With the testing or boosting mode with limitation, we could were able to train the um, train the skills already acquired and to sharpen them. Let's try it and go back and open the next one, which is scales. Here, the exercise contains three minor scales: natural, melodic, and harmonic. We can hear them here if we want. And it says here that it contains adaptive questions which means that I've added extra questions that will only be released or given if, if necessary. So if the student does well and passes above the threshold for passing, he or she will only get a small amount of numbers uh, of questions. Actually, for this one, it's only three. If some of the answers are wrong and they go below the passing threshold, they'll get the extra two questions. And because they're adaptive, they will be turning back to some of the wrong answers. So this is again a way of differentiating. It's multiple choice. We have the three options here below and I press new question over here to begin. I guess it's a natural minor. It was correct. I go with melodic minor, correct as well. I can hear the augmented second there. So I take harmonic minor and I was either lucky or 
out of good, but at least I got them all three right. And I can just click finish exercise. And the two last questions that are a bit darker in the color up here, I don't get them because I, I didn't mean to. And by the way, you can adjust and customize the scales or invent your own scales. You can also make them fewer notes. It doesn't have to be like a seven note or eight notes. You can, it can be as you want. So if you have a bit of creativity, you can use that exercise in a variety of ways. You can also have all the notes played at once. So it, it sounds like a cluster or some kind of advanced chord. I move on to the next module. Let's go back and see what that is. That's rhythms. And for the rhythm exercises here, it's rhythm reading. And the purpose is training rhythm, reading, and precision of performing rhythms. And the efficiency here is because you can hear your own answer. And you can compare your answer with the score and with the right answer that EMS will play for you. It's also bridging theory and practice since we can use music that is generated by, by ear master as up here, or we can mus use real music, for example, a Haydn string quartet. You can also add your own music if you want. Let's try it. For the rhythm exercises, we can tap on the space bar or we can clap using the microphone. We'll be using the space bar for this one. And of course, all these note values are someone or ones that I've chosen when customizing these exercises. The amount of bars and the um, and the note values chosen. So that's something that you can do. Let's try it. I tap it on the space bar. Twenty-five notes out of twenty-nine, and some of the right ones were even not exactly right. They were a bit off. Here I was too early. Here I missed some. I was really off at this point, and then from there it's a bit better. But um, the precision has to be worked with. So I could try it again, but in order not to waste your time, I'll move on to the next question. Maybe I'll do better then. Also not completely well, still a bit better, but the precision of the notes, there's especially a tendency we can see from the yellow errors that um, some of them are a bit too early. So the little green triangles show me where I hit and the arrow shows me that it was a bit too early and that one I missed. Let's try it with some real music. Of course, I could, if I wanted to, again, hear my answer. and learn from that. I could also have your math to play, play it right for me. And so on. Let's move on to Haydn. Haydn's second string where it's at. The first violin voice. Here's an excerpt from that, from that score. And it's important, this music is important into a rhythmic sites reading exercise. So we only have to deal with the rhythm, but the pitches of course vary, making it just giving it an impression of being real music and, um, but still we have to read only the rhythm. Finally, a bit better, a bit more green, some of them a little bit late or a little early. 
and um, it, it, these arrows can help you see some patterns. So maybe you find out that all for the triplets, that especially the first beat often comes a bit too early. Maybe I'm too eager because I know it's a triplet with fast notes. So I start too early, so I have to practice that. I finished the exercise. So by comparing our answer with a score and with the correct answer, we quickly realize where our challenges are and we are able to learn from it. Let's move on to the next module. which is chords, hearing chords. And the purpose here is being able to identify chords by ear. It's really helpful for any musician, especially if, if you're improvising. The focus is on hearing and building the chords interval by interval, because I've chosen the answer input option that we call the functional keyboard. It looks like this. It shows you the steps from one to a second, to a minor second, and so on. So, but it's, it doesn't take into account what the starting note is. It always has the root on the one here. Let's try to hear. And if you remember from before, the, the different chords were five different seventh chords that are listed here. Seventh, major seventh, minor seventh, um, major chord with a major seventh, a diminished, a fully diminished seventh chord and a minor seventh chord with a flat fifth. So we take new question. And we can hear it again. And I can try to construct it. And here, if I want to make it a little bit easier for the student or for myself, I take away the silent input because it allows me to actually hear the notes I'm putting in there. An E minor seventh. I spell the chord interval by interval. Submit the answer. And maybe we should make it a little bit more difficult. So I put on the silent, silent input mode and try again. I take the third, the major third, the perfect fifth, the minor seventh, and I can't hear it because it's, it's in silent mode, silent input mode. So I just answer and hope for the best. I was lucky again. And it sounds a bit Tristan-like, so I go with the flat third, the B5 and the B7 there, and finish the exercise. And move on to the next module, and actually also the last module. I've, I have created a few exercises here, but I'm only going to be using one of them, which is a a duet with two voices um, and I'm going to be singing the upper voice and you can choose when creating these exercises you can choose to hear the other voices you can choose to see the other voices as well or none of them but here in this case we can see both voices as is the case here this one has three questions we can see one two three questions and that's the first four bars. It's the next four bars. And lastly, it's all eight bars together. <clears throat> and from the start, we get the key established. We get the first tone, we get a counting bar in three, four, and we start singing the melody. So we can see the flow of the question down here. I click record answer. So, 
something went wrong. It started out pretty well. We can see the pitch curves helps us detect what's going on. I get correct marks for these ones, and it seems to be going pretty well, <clears throat> though my voice is a bit weary. It's late afternoon in Denmark. So um, here a bit unstable. Uh, the intonation could have been better. And if we dare, we can hear what we did. And if you've sung something not so well, it's not always a pleasure, but it's good to learn from. So let's have your master play my answer. I could detect that I was a bit flat on this one and the, the curve also shows me that. And by mistake, I went too high here. I went up instead of down. That's why I missed all these last notes. Um, the best thing to do here is actually when you do exercises like this, put on a headset because then you're sure that the metronome clicks don't go into the microphone of your computer, which is probably what's happening right here with the pitch curve. So let's go on to the next one, the next four bars. <clears throat> and I get ready. Ah, that was better. <clears throat> and lastly, we do the whole thing. Okay, a bit unstable here, um, starting a bit too low, going a bit too high. And as I showed you before, we could hear the, the whole thing again. I won't do that now, but um, we could do that. And with the auditive evaluation and the visual marks and the pitch curve, I'm really able to quickly detect my errors and quickly uh, improve. So... And in this manner, we can actually, with maybe eight or 10 or 20 questions, we can work through a whole piece. So you can use it also for choirs, for learning a new piece, put all the music into Ear Master and have, um, have your choir singers practice it bit by bit maybe, or just the whole way through as you wish. So these were the exercises that we've chosen to demonstrate We've seen how the variety of exercises in EarMaster helps you find or make exercises that fit the purpose that you want. We've also seen how we can change the focus or the tempo of an exercise by adjusting the settings that we find in the menu over here to the right. And the possibilities are almost endless because there are over 2,500 built-in exercises and the option of customizing your own and even adding your own pieces makes it always, almost endless with the possibilities. Let's go back to the home screen. Now that I've, I've been through all the exercises for today, I can click down here, which shows me the results and statistics. I do that and I get a view of my own results and statistics for the different um, all results, for the customized exercises, and I find the one for today, efficient oil training with EarMaster. If I double click, I come in here and I can see actually on the different, in the different categories, how well I did. I did well in chords, I did well in scales, um, not quite as well in intervals, pretty good in rhythms and pretty good also more or less in the side singing. The, the blue marks over here show, shows me that I've completed the first four ones. I have not completed all the side singings because you may remember that I had other ones prepared that we haven't looked at. So I can take a more close look to, for example, where the problems were, because what about the intervals? I had a score of 85. I was 
Ah, that was because I was missing the perfect fifth. I guessed that one, I guess, wrong. And a major third, I got that one wrong at one time, too. Uh, if I could also take a look at the, the rhythms and see my, my score there. So, and if you're a music educator, the same results and statistics are available for you to see for your students. They also have a way to practicing without you seeing it because by using the customized exercises that they choose and, and customize themselves, they can practice without anyone seeing the results. So lastly, I just want to show you that when, if you're a music educator, you have the option of choosing teacher view down here and getting these four tools that I've been using today or for preparing today's assignments. The workbook editor, where you create the assignments, the assignment manager, where you can see your teams, where you can see your courses and classes. Let's click on it. And I have ear training class one here with five students. And, and I can, I've assigned this exercise that we've been looking on today for them. And there's the music library where you can upload your own music XML files or choose between hundreds of uh, music pieces from Bach chorales to real book pieces and many others. And uh, the student results, as I said, showing the results that we saw before, just the ones that were my results. So now we'll do our Q&A session and we'll be very happy to hear your questions or comments and we'll do our best to answer. So while I stop sharing my screen, you can start thinking about what to ask about or comment on and put it into the chat in the, in the Google Meet. So please just go ahead and feel free to do that. If you don't have any questions or, or um, think that you have heard enough, I just want to thank you for your time and for following along here for this EarMaster webinar. And remember that we'll be happy to answer uh, all your questions also later. So feel free to contact us, send us an email, for example. Please, could you show the workbook editor? I'd like to see how an exercise is created. Thanks. Of course, of course I will. And thank you, Ian, for that question. I will um, share my screen again then. Hold on for two seconds. We'll be ready with it. I think it's almost ready. And you should be able to see the teacher view here. I click into the to the workbook editor and it pops up on the other screen. So I switch it to that one. Um, and I have it totally blank right now. And you have, the, so I want to create a new module with lessons. Let's just click new lessons. It adds a module and it adds a first lesson. Your master helps me showing me that I can choose an activity here. So this is where I choose between the 14 categories. So maybe we should try something. Um, we could take court identification. And here, down, down here is where I choose the content of the lesson. And up here is where I choose the flow of the questions. That is, let's, so let's start up here, let's say, um, how many questions do we want right now? It's 10, let's make it 12. No, let's make it only eight because then the fast ones or the, the really skilled ones don't have to answer more than eight. But we give six extra for the other ones and make them adaptive so they get mostly the ones that they answered cor incorrectly. For the lesson, throw, lesson flow, we'll keep the passing threshold of 70% and a 90% score to be recommended to move on to the next lesson. Answer input here is where I can choose to see the staff, but I'll just leave it here to make the student um, choose him or herself what they want to see. If I wanted, for example, the functional keyboard, um, I could lock the settings to on here. And 
yeah, some extra exercise settings, for example, silent input. If you don't um, want to lock the settings, just like leave them for the, for the user to choose. And down here, if we end it now, we only get two chords, a major and a minor. Maybe that's what we want, but maybe we also want the diminished chord, the augmented chord, and then we have like four basic triads. How do we want them played? I think I would rather have them played harmonically as a chord. Um, the pitch range, two octaves, that's fine. Um, and yeah, so already now we have a lesson that we can save and we can upload and, and add to in the assignment manager, add to a course. I want to show you one thing more though, because this is one that we've customized, customized from the bottom. I can also import a lesson. And this is really nice and it's really helpful because instead of um, building everything from scratch, you can take it, for example, from the beginners course or the general workshops, um, already built in courses, but you import them into, into your own workbook. And that workbook you can assign for your class for next week, for example, or any week to come. So I click next here to select which one I want to import. Of course, I'm dealing with court identification. So I want to go into that workshop and, um, and no, actually let's take another one. So we get the different, different categories. Uh, it could be scale identification. And um, let's go with some church modes. Um, all the modes descending. I click OK, and immediately I have this one and it's ready to use. And if I think I want to adjust it, for example, uh, I think it's a bit too tricky to get it only uh, descending. I actually want it either ascending to, um, shifting in order, or play it ascending and descending uh, at once, maybe. So that's more or less a short presentation of um, how to create a lesson, a workbook with lessons customized from the bottom or imported from, from the general workshop. And you can import lessons from your own workshops that you've created earlier on as well. I hope this answers the question, Ian. Otherwise, um, just, yeah, just write again. Was there any qu other questions, Quentin? No questions. Not at the moment. Okay. Well, then I just want to want to thank you for your time. And uh, if you have further questions popping up, maybe later, you can check out our website. We have a also have a support site there, and a support email. I think Quentin will post it in the chat so you have the site to visit. So thank you very much for joining us today and have a nice day or morning or evening, wherever you are. Hope to see you later. And please, if there's anything, we'll be happy to help. Just send us an email. Bye.